Welcome back to Happy Place Virtual Festival. This is an introduction to your zodiac, part two of my astrology series. I'm Francesca Oddi, and I've made you a worksheet to make this interactive because it's really boring if basically you're here to learn about yourself. <laughs> so hopefully you've done your worksheet and you know where your planets are. Okay, so Aries is the first sign of the zodiac and it is a cardinal sign and a fire sign. That's what we talked about in the last video. So it makes things happen. It's a doer. It goes. It, it's, it's direct. To say that um, Aries is selfish or, you know, too, too straightforward is to, is to miss the point because that, that's what they're here to do. They're, he they're here to go from A to B and make things happen. So if you have the sun in Aries, your star sign is Aries, and you're probably kind of direct and maybe slightly bossy in a good way and you don't like being told what to do and you're independent and maybe you know you left school and you run your own business or you're self-employed or you're good at sales because you you know you get to the point or what else could or you you're a mountain bike instructor because you're very sporty and active Aries is ruled by Mars and Mars is a feisty planet that is red and hot and so Aries people are kind of red and hot and maybe they have red hair <laughs> and maybe if you're rising Aries your rising sign is Aries maybe you've got very broad shoulders and perhaps a Roman sort of nose you know I, I don't I'm not rising Aries um but a lot of people who are rising Aries are very athletic and sporty and decisive and they're like no we're doing this bang 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 it's a, it's a real gift, I think, to have that direction that Aries has. If you have the moon in Aries, then you are very active. Perhaps what feels like home to you, what feels like nurture, is doing stuff. It's making stuff happen. You know, the sort of people who go on holiday and like, well, we can't just sit here. <laughs> you know, Aries energy wants to fight. And they might actually like a bit of a fight. You know, it's a fire sign. They want a bit of passion. Some people earth signs perhaps are more chill you know you can meet two people who say oh we never argue well they've got earth signs you know whatever you know nothing bothers fire signs again we there is a hot-headedness to fire so two fire people in a relationship or at least one <laughs> it's gonna be like you've annoyed me i'm telling you it's like all right calm down but there is that burnout with with fire and um, with aries and that that you know they'll get mad but then you know move on get over it um so that's that's Aries Venus and Aries it describes who you love perhaps you love Aries type people people who are very entrepreneurial direct independent straightforward come up to you in the bar and ask you out or do things for themselves that's what you like about yourself if you have Venus and Aries and that's what you like in other people you like people who are uncomplicated Aries is the first sign of the zodiac and it corresponds to the first phase of life which is when you're a baby and when you're a baby you cry when you're unhappy and you laugh when you're happy there's that uncomplicated Aries simplicity to I'm going to throw my emotions at you but I'm not going to hold any grudges excuse me and I will change my my emotions will flow and you know we'll just move on but there will be ups and downs, you know, that's Aries. And Mars in Aries, Mars rules Aries. So Mars, Mars in Aries is up for a fight, <laughs> you know? But they, they, will, they will stand to attention. And if there's something needs sorting out, Mars in Aries is going to get straight in there and sort it out and be, perhaps they are, you know, they're, they're quick to anger. Oh, you're annoying me, you know, that, that kind of Mars and Aries thing. But also there's an emergency or there's a problem or the car breaks down, they are the first one to get out and sort it out. There's that cardinal fire, air, uh, not air, element to them. Cardinal fire, they, they do, they make things happen, they make life happen. And that's it. Rising Aries, I think I said, like broad shoulders, very athletic. So that's Aries, if you have Aries planets. Now, in the zodiac story, every sign is completely different to the one before. So if you look at Aries being all like, come on, let's get on with it, guys, then Taurus is much more chill. It is fixed earth. It is like the landscape, you know, the fields and the tree, not the trees sway a bit, but the fields like flat, unchanging. So, you know, when you're trying to get a Taurus to change their mind, 
<laughs> you look at look at the earth look at you know when you look at england out of plane <laughs> good luck changing that there's something very calm and serene and beautiful to taurus um but it's very very unchanging it's fixed earth so if you have the sun in taurus taurus rules the senses so aries sorry i didn't say aries rules the head it the you know it goes through phases of life so the first sign of the zodiac aries is when you're a baby um and also it rules ahead and then taurus is like toddler phase when you're like no <laughs> what's taurus's favorite word no <laughs> because as well it's not it, it's not verbose it's simple and uncomplicated and also mine taurus is incredibly possessive and attached to things buddha i was reading about this the other day buddha was born at at the full moon in Taurus had died at the full moon in Scorpio or vice versa sorry I don't know that but either way Buddha's life was very much about love and attachment and then you know this idea of letting go which is a Scorpio thing which we can talk about later but Taurus energy yeah it's very fixed doesn't loves what it loves and doesn't want to share it perhaps and so yeah Taurus they tend to love gardening cooking um, a lot of models uh, I had a client who was rising Taurus and then they got lots of, you know, referrals from that and they were all Taurus, 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 Taurus. And I, I noticed that yeah, T Venus, the planet of love and beauty rules Taurus. So Taurus, um, they, they, they do, they are often, you know, conventionally attractive, um, very lush looking. Adele is a really good example of a Taurus. Cows are very Taurus. Ta cows are your perfect Taurus archetype and they are still and steady and there's flies landing on them and they're like whatever not bothered and um until they get mad and then they run at you and that is the taurus vibe but yeah they you know they're chilled and they're beautiful and they've got the big eyes <laughs> and they are very in tune with nature and the senses so singing that's why I, I was going down that route with the models and Adele and, and the voice and um, George Clooney is an excellent Taurus example, Pierce Brosnan, um, Penelope Cruz, all very lush looking. Do you know what I mean by that? Kind of, it's, they're just, that, that, that's what I hope you know what I mean by that. And a lot of landscape gardens, farmers, it's obvious, like very Taurus thing to do. Um, what else? There you go. Tell, tell me what you do, <laughs> you know, but, you know, there's people normally doing something very earthy, practical, make masseuse, yoga teacher, anything to do with the body and the senses and um, calm. And then the moon. So if your moon sign is in Taurus, we take the moon is very changeable. You know, it changes its shape from our perspective on Earth. It's full moon and then new moon. And so our moon controls our moods. And our moods are very changeable. We all have changeable moods. But if you put the moon into Taurus, which is very still, you get perhaps more of a calmer, content vibe, more a uh, content energy. Again, it doesn't like change in a, um, emotionally. If you've got the moon in Taurus, it might be hard to let go, but there's a lot of loyalty there. And you enjoy having a nice bath, putting all the bath oils in, walks in nature. The slow life is going to feel good. And um, perhaps if you've got the moon in Taurus, if you've got Mercury in Taurus, like I said earlier, Taurus is favorite word. No, but there's a, you know, there's an amazing simplicity to somebody be, who is able to take on information, filter it and, and come out with a very simple sentence. You know, this isn't somebody who's got to over talk. There's a clarity. Taurus is quite a slow sign. You know, if you imagine a, a cow getting up, it, it's a slow process um but not to be underestimated it's not it's not all about speed there is a quality there um venus in taurus venus rules taurus so that's a very strong venus energy and i i always joke about like if you've got venus in taurus then you're like face mask chocolate red wine um all the all the physical pleasures massage lying in bed venus the the planet venus the myth you know the goddess myth Aphrodite she loved she she was surrounded by um the fates I think <laughs> in the myth she was surrounded by people who spring you know the, the birds followed her around and scattered flowers around her it was all very um typically natural and beautiful 
Um, and if you've got Venus and Taurus, you demand loyalty. You're going to be very attracted to loyalty. If you've got Mars in Taurus, Mars wants to be an Aries fighting. Like I said, Taurus is pretty slow. So Mars in Taurus, you're going to be slow to anger. But when you anger, it is going to be like a bull running at the gate. And you're going to care, get fired up about nature and the environment, perhaps. And maybe you get fired up and passionate about cooking and being a bit of a foodie. Things like that. Um, and things you that things that you value, you get very you know attached to your values because Taurus is all about what you love, and so you can get really stand for what you believe in, you know, with Mars and Taurus. Um, and rising Taurus, like I said, tends to will look. I know a few people who are rising Taurus who look so calm, so you know, so serene, <laughs> but deep down, excuse me, there's a lot more going on, a lot, but. It, your rising sign is what you seem like to the outside. Okay, so Gemini is the next sign of the zodiac and it's completely different to Taurus. It's everything that Taurus isn't. So Gemini is about variety. Gemini is where the body splits in two. So we've got Aries, Taurus, and then Gemini. And Gemini is the twins. You can see that on your worksheet. And it's all about, right, it's mutable air. Let's go here and there and here and there and here and there. And we're going to learn this and that and that. So Gemini people, like I said, it's very journalistic. They they thrive with communication, but also art. You know, it's it's not like everybody who's a Gemini is, is brilliant with words, even though they probably will be, I believe, and quite witty. I have clients who say, no, I'm, I was terrible at school and I'm... I couldn't, I couldn't write, I'm very dyslexic, but they're probably an artist or a musician. They're still dealing in expression or maybe a photographer. Um, there's normally some way of exchanging information and working with people with Gemini. Moon in Gemini, if your moon's in Gemini, then you love communication. Moon and Gemini are like, you okay? What have you eaten? What are you doing? How's your mum? You know, Gemini, they, they thrive on news and information. That's what feels like love to them. So they chat, chat, chat. But of course, you know, they are the type that will text you all day long or you will enjoy if you've got the moon in Gemini. You know, you'll enjoy talking, but then it'll be like, okay, next, you know, next thing or... And maybe not like their space being encroached upon too much. Maybe not. Depends on the rest of the chart. But there is that element of freedom with Gemini. Mercury in Gemini. Mercury is the planet that rules Gemini. So planet rules of sign and mercury is the planet of communication and is very strong in gemini so people with mercury in gemini tend in my opinion and the opinion of probably most astrologers is you know it's, it's a strong gemini it's a strong mercury there, there will be some definite communication skill intelligence wittiness um quickness of speed and thought mercury is very fast you know mercury is also known as quicksilver and that's the there's a synchronicity in that there's a reason for that People who have Venus in Gemini will be very friendly with everybody. Hello, how are you? How are you? How are you? I've got lots of friends with Venus in Gemini, and you know, they're very chatty and want to know everyone. They probably, they're not, they're going to enjoy that variety. And that's not to say they're not going to get married and, and have a very committed relationship, but they're still going to be friends with lots of people, probably of both sexes, because uh, Mercury was sometimes a man and sometimes a woman. So there is that swapping you know it's it, it he's the genderless planet so to speak so there is that fluidity and with mars and gemini you don't fight with the mars and gemini <laughs> they are very clever very good with words and they fight mars with their words and they get turned on by it they will they'll they'll like somebody who um perhaps is bilingual or can talk to them or you know will really chat to them you know the worst thing you can do for gemini is give them someone who won't speak to them because conversation is air <laughs> it's the air they breathe um it rules the hands i think i said that it links with communication and bicycles and all forms of trans transport if you're rising gemini and you meet the world as a gemini then you go out into the world asking questions, seeking to learn, very curious. Hello, much like I was saying about the texting with the moon in Gemini, if you're writing Gemini, it's like, hello, who are you? How long have you worked here? What did you do before? How come you ended up here? And you could always spot, I met a little seven-year-old girl when I was um, at an event a couple of years ago and she, she would, came to see me and I had some crystals on my stand and she, was, she asked so many questions. And her mum was really, really patient and, you 
you know, letting her be curious and it was it was all good. But in the end, I had to get the time of birth just to see that she was rising Gemini because you could just see her brain going next, next, next. That's a very Gemini thing just to kind of stream. Russell Brand is a Gemini, you know, the way he just he just talks. And obviously there's a few others, famous Geminis, but he's a, he's a very, very good example. And what else have we got? I think that's it. So Cancer. Cancer is ruled by the moon and the moon is our emotions and what feels like home and it's all about caring and nurturing and it's very moody. We get mood from the moon. So if you've got the sun in Cancer, you care about family and you care about togetherness. I, you know, a lot of people who work in any sort of job, if you work in PR or in a big corporate or in a school or wherever you work, the Cancerian people are, might end up managing a team and watching the team develop and watching the team grow. And maybe you work with food, like lots of chefs, cancer and chefing go hand in hand because it's all about food. And then you, you can see, you know, the archetypal, typical chef behavior of being really passionate about what they're doing and then getting quite emotional about it, being quite, you know, quite Italian perhaps about things. It's emotional. You know, that's a very Cancerian way of caring deeply and, and, and getting emotionally moved by things. And so if you're a Cancerian, perhaps you do, I mentioned this in the first example, but it's typical for nurses and uh, people who are working the caring professions. And, you know, in lockdown, in the sky, we've had the North Node in Cancer up until about two weeks ago, so up until mid-May. And the caring professions, the professions ruled by Cancer and the Moon have been in the spotlight um, because of that synchronicity between what's going on in the sky and what's going on on Earth. And so, you know, it's supermarket workers and and people working in hospitals and carers, they're all very lunar professionals. And the teachers, they're the people who are still, you know, they're the key, the key workers. It's all moon stuff. Um, but of course, lots of Cancerians, like I said, work anywhere. And because Cancer likes security, there will be people um, earning cash. So in banks or wherever they can run a business, make some money, get some security. Moon rules Cancer. So the moon in Cancer is very, very, Cancerian, uh, they get the drinks in, they bring food, they always turn up with something to the party, you know, never come with the hands hanging. And they are um, very emotional, very sweet, very sensitive, might have a loony sense of humour. Peter Kay is a Cancerian, you know, he's your, he's your typical Cancerian, um, does it, did his tour for his mum, but he's been, he's very observant. It's a water sign. He, he um, observes people and so acutely that he can feed back and do all his funniness, funny stuff. So yeah, the moon and cats are very emotional. And yeah, this loony sense of humour is very Cancerian. It's all part of it. They can be quite sad and upset sometimes, like we all can, but definitely they, they get moved by things quite a lot, but, but also be very um, funny. Venus and Cancer. Well, Cancer, I didn't say the body part, is the breasts and the stomach. So Venus and Cancer... Uh, I'll let you read between the lines. Um, but Venus loves, Venus in Cancer loves food and maybe the girl next door and somebody who cares about their family and who somebody who's very, um, has a strong family and has strong family values. Our values are our Venus. Venus in Cancer, you know, cares about food. <laughs> We're foodies. We like nice restaurants. You know, they're both Cancerian, that type of thing. Mars in Cancer. Mars is a fight, 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 fight. And Cancer is water. It's cardinal water. So you put Mars in water and it's a bit like, pss, you know, but Cancer is a very defensive sign. It's the crab. It's the crab. It's the, it's the sensitive person inside their spiky shell. And so Mars in Cancer can be a little bit defensive. The USA, 4th of July, is a Cancerian country. They're quite a defensive country, but they're really pa patriotic, you know. And they love food, they love apple pie, and um, I'm digressing. <laughs> but Mars and Cancer will definitely fight for things that they care about. They will fight for their family, but it can also be quite moody and um, at times and withdrawn, perhaps. And rising cancel, it's very sweet, come into the situation. How are you? You okay? You know, caring. They meet the world through the eyes of somebody who cares about you um, and cares about your feelings. Again, like in lockdown, whilst we had this very strong, 
cancerian energy in the sky how are you like in actually meaning it as opposed to like hi right you know cancer cares there is that caring side to them okay leo leo is the fifth sign of the zodiac and chanel number five was so called because she was a leo and she knew that Leo is the fifth sign of Zodiac, so that's why you have Chanel number five. And it's all about all that kind of Chanel glamour and um, being seen and, and, and being appreciated. It's there for the applause. The sun, the ego, rules the sign of Leo. And so if the sun, if you have the sun in Leo, then you should have a, a strong ego. And that, you know, drama schools are full of Leo, so like, want to be the protagonist, want to be the main, main part, you know, want fame, they want, they want to be seen, JK Rowling is a Leo, Harry Potter is a Leo, <laughs> she put his birthday, I think, the same day as hers, uh, she, JK Rowling is classically trained, and she knows how to draw birth charts, so a lot of Harry Potter is, is like, resonates, because it's so brilliantly astrological, and I often like to talk about that a lot, but I won't talk about it here, <laughs> um, but it's very interesting, um, how everybody you know like no i won't do it <laughs> but I'll, I'll you know it's it's there and so yeah leo is a very strong ego they want to be seen the good manager managerial skills business people um healthy pride but not hopefully not too much pride and the sun is always giving out light give 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 so sometimes leos struggle with receiving you know um as in they don't listen always that I'm not, again, generalising, but there's that thing of like giving, 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 very generous, full of compliments, but might not be that good at receiving. Moon in Leo has a healthy pride. They know, they know what they're worth. They know what they need and what they want in a relationship and they have standards perhaps and they might be a little bit dramatic as well when you know, they, again, like the Aries moon, the Leo moon wants a little bit of passion in their relationship. It, they're not there for, um, just it's not there to meander there, 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 there's passion there's heart it, the heart leo rules the heart there's a lot of heart there there's a lot of love there um if you have mercury in leo then you like telling stories perhaps because mercury is how you communicate and leo is definitely this you know theatrical energy of, of listen to me a little bit so i know a lot of mercury and leos who tell a good story and stand still when they're, when they're telling it and really act it out and it's all very theatrical and it's a good story with with highs and lows and you know beginning to end and they like to be heard they like to speak they, they, they you know they might like the sound of their own voice hopefully hopefully they maybe they write but they do something they in their work or in, or, or even just a day to day life where they tell you know they they're lively communicators Venus in Leo is pretty glam. Venus, in, I said this already, I think, so I'll do it quickly. But Venus, if you've got Venus in Leo, particularly, right, this is something. So say you are a Cancerian, you have the sun in Cancer, or maybe the sun in Virgo, but you have Venus in Leo, you'll you'll be like, you know, all dressed up, like a good Leo, got your earrings in, got your makeup done, got your rings on, got your high heels on, or or at least... You know, if you're wearing your active wear, you've got your, your matching active wear. Leo tends to be um, adorned. It's glamorous. It's a glamorous, generous, vivacious, big personality, shoulders back, hopefully. And so Venus and Leo is going to love that in another person. You know, theatre goers, pe people who go out, who socialise, who, who have this, who enjoy that kind of vibrant life. And Mars in Leo. Mars is how you fight. Leo is pretty feisty. It's a fire sign. You know, it's a bit of plate smashing when you're angry. It's passion, it's colour, it's drama. And also just getting really dressed up and putting your glitter on and <laughs> dancing. You know, you, you might really like somebody who's theatrical or, and you'll like music and music videos. And, uh, you know, when you were younger or maybe you still do, you know, you, you, you get on the dance floor and you get straight on the podium. <laughs> and you like people who are like that and you get passionate about a story or a cause or not really a cause but what would you get passionate about with Mars and Leo oh, I don't know you're yourself <laughs> no 
there is something better than that but my brain's stopping me now but leo things passionate about theater and production and storytelling and and loads and loads of other things rising leo rising leo is again a very very easy one to spot in my opinion they often bleach their hair because leo rules the sun and so they leo you know leo's you know what leo's are like with their hair they, they care a lot about their hair or they tend to it's their mane and men as well men will have distinctive hair i think is often as well sometimes they've got no hair so it's just it's distinct by the fact that there is none but also you know a leo man's gonna have a little bit longer than average hair sometimes and the women yeah it'll be done <laughs> and maybe blonde and or you know there's people it doesn't have to be this stereotypical but it, it does tend to be and but it's also somebody who's just very warm and hello it's so lovely to see you i've got you know friends and family who are rising leo and i'm always like how do you do that you know, everywhere you go you look lovely have you lost weight where have you been oh fantastic oh that looked brilliant you know they really care really passionate about um everything a lot of warmth they exude warmth really really um obvious and they you know the bright colors the bright pink the leopard print leo the lion animal print again weirdly it's a thing leo's and their animal print um i think that's all five okay so virgo virgo is everything that leo isn't so virgo is all about being the pa perhaps and being very ordered and being very organized and um virgo sorts the wheat from the chaff so it's like this is good this is bad this is good this is bad so virgo can little virgo is also ruled by mercury so it can be a little bit overthinky you know like this just um because mercury rules the nerves and also the the small intestine particularly with virgo it rules the small intestine and so Virgos, when they get stressed, it tends to go straight to their guts, you know, but they won't let on often because it's an earth sign and Virgos are like smiley. It's all OK. It's all OK. But then they lie in bed like, oh, you know, um, a little bit stressed out. So that's something that they would want to keep an eye on. I always, you know, there's lots of herb. I'm into herbal medicine and they, a lot of Virgos tend to regulate their diet you know maybe cut out caffeine or cut out gluten perhaps it again I'm, I'm not advising i'm just saying this is a, a theme that tends to happen because they're very sensitive it's virgo and is opposite pisces you know they're six months apart and it's like the axis of allergy so a lot of hay fever and um you know childhood asthma is very virgo gem virgo pisces thing so they tend to self-regulate with that and virgo yeah they're brilliant at organizing being being helpful looking after people lots of doctors nutritionists personal trainers it's a very virgo thing because it's all about health daily routine you know watch your diet organize this organize your life you know very helpful very humble moon in virgo is like that um so they can be quite hard on themselves if you've got the moon in virgo because you know it's like this is good this is bad this is good you, you don't perhaps want to be doing that to your own personal emotional life but they might i've in my experience men with the virgo moon are immaculately tidy like incredibly almost a little bit ocd like so 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 pristine the women in my experience are not the same <laughs> it's I, I obviously i've got a small sample size but i do always say that and normally people interact and they're like yes i agree um but there is something very caring you need a coat have you have you eaten this have you eaten that you know about your health about who you are somebody if you have the moon in virgo or somebody else has the moon in virgo that you know that's how they behave venus in virgo values routine commitment don't change your plan on somebody who's got uh, venus in virgo because they value um structure and organization and and that's you know you will venus and virgo will be attracted to and will attract people to them by virtue of how sorted they are you know and and how in control perhaps and again brilliant brilliant pa i would if i have somebody work with me i'd love them to have something in virgo because you know it's a mutable sign they're very adaptable and also they um what 
they, they, yeah, they go on with it. They're there. They're, they're, they're picking up the pieces. Leo's there making all the big plans because the story follows on. So Leo makes all the big plans and says, do, you know, let's, let's start this project. Like Santa Claus is your classic Leo. And then all the elves are your classic Virgo. <laughs> um, Mars in Virgo, again, wants to, wants to assert order on their environment, just like rising Virgo. So rising Virgo is kind of born with a clipboard in their arm they come out into the world and they're like how can i sort the world out and organize it and make this better for you and they will often have very small hands and feet virgo for some reason i don't actually know the reason but again it's something virgo people have small hands and feet and tend to be quite petite anyway tend to not always tend to and it, because it's all about the chart it's always all about the chart and yeah mars in virgo mars and the rising sign are both kind of sh sharp. They're both way. They're both how we approach the world. So Mars also wants to organise their environment, and you know, born born with a clipboard or born with a spreadsheet. They, they, that's what that's what they care about. They care about organising everything and having tidy cupboards and however it manifests. Whatever your life looks like, that you know, it'll manifest in your life. Libra is everything that. Virgo is not. So Virgo is all about order and detail and like looking, maybe being a little bit introvert, maybe a little bit introverted. Depends on the rest of the chart. Where's your Venus? Um, Libra is all about relationship, cardinal air. So it's all about building that dynamic between me and you. And so Libra people tend to be either working in sales fantastically you know building you know the account manager they they build relationships or front of house hotel staff fantastic or law because libra is the scales it's all about justice and so libra really cares about justice and beauty makeup um libra is ruled by venus so you know hairdressers beauticians have a lot of libra in their chart the moon in libra wants to be balanced they want harmony in the home um they want easy conversation they want things to be nice they want people to get on and they need things to look beautiful they need you know straight pictures they couldn't have anything out of place and need harmonious colors my mum is rising libra i'm at my parents house at the minute look how this is very libra you know all these muted tones um and you know everything has to be harmonious and tidy and i come in and ruin it <laughs> but um yeah moon and libra they, they need order venus rules libra so people with venus and libra tend to be excellent diplomats excellent relationship negotiators excellent charmers if you ever i don't know if you've ever heard the phrase venus dimples but venus is linked to dimples and venus rules libra so libras often have dimples they, you know, come through the warning. So if you're rising Libra, you might have big dimples. I don't know. It's got big cheeks. <laughs> and so, yeah, Libra. Is it charming? And um, what's his name? Oh, Jude Law. So Libra and, you know, lady killer. <laughs> um, but very charming. Very, it's all the opposite of Aries. They're six months apart. So where Aries is like, I want this. Libra goes, okay, darling, but have you considered this? Libra is the art of getting people to do what you want and they thank you for it. So, you know, something to bear in mind. That's why they're such excellent diplomats. And Mars in Libra is very common in politicians because it's like Mars wants to be an Aries fighting, but he has to slow down and fight with words and reason. And, you know, it's an air sign, cardinal air sign. Let's work this out. Let's work through this relationship. Mercury in Libra has a beautiful way with words so, or beautiful way of expressing themselves. So art again, or, or law, or again, somebody who's just very gently persuasive, somebody who doesn't lose their cool, somebody who intelligently and beautifully finds a way to get their point across. And rising Libra, you know, wants to look nice. They've got, they got the dimples perhaps, and they, they're very, what do you want to do? I don't mind, I don't mind. But we could do this, but I don't mind, you know, it's that again, that kind of getting their own way by being cool about it, 
but also definitely caring about the other person. Libra is the seventh sign of the zodiac, is opposite Aries. Aries is about me. Libra is definitely about we. It's definitely compromising, compromising, compromising all the time. The, the you know, the art personally, if you've got a lot of Libra, is to not bend yourself out of shape because you're always people pleasing. But and again, you know, it's manners and looking nice is good manners. And Libra leaves the house with their shoes and their belt matching and, you know, their hair brushed because it's good manners. You know, they would never go to Tesco in their pajamas looking mental like I would, uh, you know, a rising rising Libra is, is going to have some, you know, like I said, manners. Okay, Scorpio is everything that Libra isn't. Oh wait, I didn't tell you the body part. Virgo small intestines, I did tell you that. Libra is the kidneys and the hormones and, and it's ruled by Venus and Venus is um, closely associated with sugar, which is why sugar has such an impact on our hormones. Okay, Scorpio rules the colon and the reproductive organs. It's birth and death. That's Scorpio. So if you have the sun in Scorpio, it's a very magnetic sign. It's fixed water. It's, you know, the still waters run deep. It's the iceberg. You only see the tip of the iceberg with Scorpio. You, you never really fully completely know what's going on. Um, but they are dedicated and passionate and they can put their mind to anything. And I always say that this because I believe it's true, but they, they're the person at school that everybody had a thing for. The Scorpio person is magnetic. Leonardo DiCaprio is my fave. <laughs> um, a lot. I mean, I still watch Titanic a lot. And it, but he's very Scorpio. He can put his mind to anything and succeed. There is this magnetism and power to Scorpio. Moon in Scorpio has very powerful emotions. That is a lot of, you know, still waters run deep and your, your moon sign, your emotions are so deep and transformative and passionate so relationships are like i'll die if you leave me you know that that kind of very extreme emotional turmoil but also passion and great passion and great love and great commitment and somebody who really cares you know there's nothing half-hearted about scorpio particularly when you when you're talking about your venus and your well any really but you know the emotional stuff so venus and scorpio can be quite private I find in my experience, you, people who have Venus and Scorpio, you don't really know that it's there because it's, it's, they are quietly magnetically attracting people to them. It's pride, but they don't, they're not going to overshare about their love life, I would say. Um, and maybe they, as well as a talent with finances, I forgot that, sorry. Scorpio is all about finance and energy because money is actually just energy, you know. It's, it's the energy transaction that we use here on earth. So there's a lot of people with strong Scorpio who work in finance. Mars and Scorpio, I did at the beginning or in the last video, but Mars is where we, um, Mars and Scorpio knows where to stick the knife in. It's like if it, to make a Mars and Scorpio angry, they're going to just simmer and be quite cool and then cut you off when they're done. And, they, and as well, it's a fixed sign. It's the, it's the other side of Taurus. So they're gonna they're not gonna quickly once they know that you don't mean harm they will they will they will they will you know give you some time uh, but give you benefit of the doubt but they, they, there is that cutting off when it's gone too far rising scorpio is like one of the main reasons i got into astrology because i could spot it and then i would able to work out what time people were born and then force them to find out what time they were born actually talk to their parents and then come back to me and so they have these very striking piercing eyes and um, um you can feel them looking at you and there's a power to to scorpio that says you know it's i'm not here to be pushed around um you sense it you sense their aura so to speak sagittarius oh mercury and scorpio is um wants knowledge is power i have clients with Mercury and Scorpio, even you know, we're talking, they start trying to turn it around and ask me stuff because there is that automatic wall of privacy where you know they get the information and they keep their information to themselves. Excellent detectives, all all Scorpio's detective work, you know. And that that could be being an, an accountant or an actuary or anything, anything, and just apply the themes, you know. So Sagittarius. Is everything, I was stretch my neck, <laughs> is everything that Scorpio isn't. So Sagittarius rules the liver, and the hips and the thighs, and it's all about movement 
And we're going to go from A to B. And Sagittarius, you know, Scorpio is here, very forensic, looking at all the details. And Sagittarius is looking at the horizon, being like, where are we going? And tripping over their feet. So Sagittarius can be quite clumsy. And then, you know, you, I've, I've been in the village earlier looking at the horses. And, you know, a horse just kind of stumbles over its feet. It's a very Sagittarian symbol because Sagittarius is connected to horses. And, okay, see, you know, it's a centaur firing his arrow. And... That's a very Sagittarian thing to be looking at the distance, looking at the big picture, but then being verbally and physically clumsy. So a tired Sagittarius, you see them like rebounding off the door frame or just saying something so bluntly. It's like, <gasps> do you want to take that back? It's pretty awkward, but it's a very Sagittarian thing. But ultimately, like I said in the last video, it's an optimistic energy. Um, and, you know, so rising Sagittarius. They see the world in a positive way and they receive that back. Mars in Sagittarius, like the horse, is going to run. When, when Sagittarius is angry, turned on, very Mars, they're going to run for the hills because they, they just, it's mutable, it's fire. They get wound up and they run off. And also Sagittarius does get wound up. It, it, it is a fire sign. It does get angry, but it does cool down again and move on. Sun in Sagittarius, jobs, travel, um, teacher, higher education more than like primary school, which is more kind of Cancer Leo Gemini combo, particularly Gemini, Cancer, for, you know, very, very small children looking after them. And then Sagittarius is like universities or coaching. Sagittarius is the sign of the life coach for sure. And the, yeah, so travel, like vicars, priests religion, faith and sales, because sales, you know, Sagittarius ultimately is selling you belief. They believe in something, believe it with me. That's like the Sagittarian impulse and let's go and learn and let's let's go more. And Sagittarius sees patterns because, you know, they see the broad perspective, so they, they see the big picture. Moon in Sagittarius is like the, you know, the, the, the nomadic moon. They live here and they live there and they move around. They like moving and they might live abroad because Sagittarius is about travel and abroad and new cultures and maybe somebody of a different religion, you know, a very different culture, perhaps. You know, if you've if you've got Venus in Sagittarius, you could marry somebody who is, is very foreign to you. And that could be like one of you grew up in Newcastle and one of you grew up in Surrey or it could be one of you grew up in India and one of you grew up in Africa you know there's the Venus and Sagittarius you love people who are different to you you love that distance you love the foreignness and the you know the the, the cross-cultural stuff it's very common Sagittarius Mercury in Sagittarius Mercury loves to be in Gemini being like I do detail very, very well. Mercury and Sagittarius, it's like, you know, Mercury's small and does the detail and Sagittarius is big and, and does the perspective. So Mercury and Sagittarius sees patterns, but might not see spelling areas. You know what I mean? If you want an editor, you want somebody who's got Mercury and Gemini or Virgo or Scorpio because they're going to be very precise and neat. Whereas Mercury and Sagittarius is going to sell you a new car because they're just like, yeah, you know, like... Salespeople, the easiest pe person to sell to is a Sagittarius because, you know, the easiest person to sell to is another salesperson. And it's like, oh, yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah, I believe you. Next. Whereas everyone else is like, give me the detail. OK, Capricorn is after Sagittarius. And, you know, Sagittarius is silly season. The sun is in Sagittarius from November 22nd to December 21st. And then we have Capricorn season and, and Capricorn kind of sweeps up after the mess of drinking and overspending that we do in, in December. And Capricorn is about rules and goals and um, dieting and paying off your credit card debt and getting, getting real, getting real. And so Saturn rules Capricorn and it's very ambitious. People with the sun in Capricorn are often in sort of professions, you know, accountants or working in banks or wearing a suit. The UK is a Capricorn country. The country was formed on the 1st of January, 1801. We, you know, we send our children to, uni uh, to school in our little uniforms and we are known for our stiff upper lip. And you know, we don't express our emotions because we are British, but obviously individually people do, but our stereotype is because we're a Capricorn nation. And so Capricorn, yeah, is ambitious. It, whatever they do, and they, they will work hard, and it's kind of quite stoic and uncomplaining. And they see Sagittarius take risk and gambling, and they're like, mm, you know, 
slow and steady. They keep working, they keep working, and they climb that mountain. It's a Capricorn is about hierarchy. And what else? The moon in Capricorn, the moon loves to be in Cancer, crying and being very emotional and free flowing. The moon in Capricorn is more buttoned up. It's more private, more shy, more British. If you've got the moon in Capricorn, perhaps you relate to that idea of being responsible. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're the eldest child in your family. Maybe you just have this personality where you look after people and you don't like talking about yourself, but you, you take on everyone else's problems. Moon and Capricorn friends of mine are, are really great. You know, they really, they really are supportive and um, thoughtful because it's very sensitive. I've read in one of my books, it's like morbidly sensitive, but they're so sensitive that they don't express their sensitivity, if you know what I mean. It's, so it's just like, I'll handle that privately. I won't burden you with it. And, and you know, I'll talk to you about you, perhaps. Venus in Capricorn, similar to the moon, um, but she loves, Capricorn also represents the older, ma older person, well, the older man, because it's, Saturn is the man, but often the older partner or an age gap in the relationship and values somebody who's established and hardworking and um, has got their selves together, <laughs> you know, who, who is established. Mars in Capricorn, you know, Mars is very rules Aries, which is cardinal and Capricorn is cardinal. So Mars in Capricorn really works hard and makes lots and lots of things happen, makes life happen. Rising Capricorn is going to be somebody who seems very reserved very professional like hi yeah nice to meet you doesn't give a lot away um but is you know they could be anything underneath that they could be leo rising capricorn but they would definitely come across as like pretty steady pretty solid and maybe not that um you know not give much away capricorn rules the skeleton and the teeth kate middleton you know with all her teeth and who else? Is Kate Moss a Capricorn? I don't know. I think she, she I don't know. Um, but yeah, Capricorn bone structure and, and teeth. Aquarius is everything that Cap is not. So Capricorn is all about the hierarchy and like the government being top down leadership. Aquarius is about equality. It's the opposite of Leo. Leo is like the king on his throne being a leader. And then Aquarius is the people, power to the people and petitions and protesting through Trafalgar Square and fighting for human rights. It's very humanitarian. So, you know, they care about this and they care about that and they care about animal rights and they care about freedom of speech and they care about all sorts of things. And so Aquarius is about the group and Aquarians will be perhaps quite techy. Aquarius is very strongly associated with tech and rules the internet. But also, yeah, like I said, humanitarian things. What else does Aquarius do? Anything really, maybe slightly quirky, where they're bringing people together. It, on, on, Aquarians are in all walks of life, but they are very innovative. It's quite very good at research, very entrepreneurial. Astrologers, Aquarius rules astrology because it's about future thinking. And, um, you know, and I, I don't really, it doesn't really relate to the people, but it's, it's ruled by Uranus, 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 but I've, you know, I've got so used to saying Uranus because that's what, that's what the astrologers say. And um, Uranus split, spins on his axis differently. He's very independent and, and does things differently and sees ahead. He's always looking ahead. And astrologers, are, you know, look ahead. We, we forecast and, and think about things like that. The moon in Aquarius is quite cool. Blood isn't thicker than water, you know. Aquarius is a sign of friendship and groups and people and living on a commune and and like kind of palling around and, 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 and getting on with everyone. So blood isn't thicker than water and people with the moon in Aquarius are very chill. You know, my friends with moon in Aquarius, they're just, yeah, like it, it's very cool. Aquarius is an aloof sign, um, quite detached, need their space like living high up because Aquarius likes, you know, having their space. Mars in Aquarius fights for their friends, cares about their friendships, cares about rights, cares about the, you know, animal rights. I'm going to write this on Facebook. <laughs> it's, it's very passionate about um, issues and, and also it's very, it's very cool in that kind of, oh, I'm not going to fight with you on a one-to-one. 
you know, if you're arguing with an Aquarius, they're just going to be like, you know, peasant. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it, they can be a bit like that because they're so intellectual and aloof and above emotion. And they don't do emotion, you know. This is fixed air. It's the furthest you can get away from cancer. It's five signs apart. They, you know, these, they, cancer that's very, very in touch with their emotions and crying all the time is like the, the antithesis of, of Aquarius. It's just like, it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. <laughs> because it's so rational. It's like, well, I, I, you know, Aquarius is very much ideas as opposed to feelings. And so Venus and Aquarius, again, values friendship and values equality. And, you know, I've got clients, Venus and Aquarius, who will call the CEO and, and be friends with people at the very top of society and then spend the weekend in a squat with their mates who were their mates because people, the value is people at, at the level that they are. You know, it's not about status, it's, it's Aquarian values of friendship and you're human and I'm human and I connect with you and I respect you for that. Mercury in Aquarius, very techy, perhaps they can write code, perhaps they can, what else can um, make you an Aquarius? Read really fast, talk really fast, think really fast, perhaps, or what else? My dad's an Aquarius and if if I don't say the sentence to him in exactly the correct way, he's like, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> the, there's definite sort of, um, he needs, like a computer, it's better. Like you, you, you tell a computer what to do, you have to put it in the format that it needs or it doesn't understand you. It's like, Meh. and Aquarius rules tech. And rising Aquarius, again, they can come out, they, David Bowie's rising Aquarius, you know, a little bit eccentric. I'm, I'm different, I'm unique. I, like, I don't fit into... So that's the paradox with Aquarius. It's you know, it's like we're all the same, but we're all different. We've all got our unique individual, but we're all the same. And it's like I don't conform. It's just doing things differently. And so rising Aquarius can have a, but it's very rational, very friendly. But they'll have opinion, and then suddenly they can change their opinion, and it's all kind of ideas based, but very chatty. But it's again, there's always going to be a distance with Aquarius. And then Pisces, the final sign of the zodiac. Um, sorry, Pisces, for being, you know, it, cause I'm, I'm aware of the time. <laughs> and so Pisces is mutable water. And it's like one foot on this earth and one foot on the next. Sorry, Aquarius rules the ankles and the eyes, which is where our circulation is porous because it's the opposite of Leo. Leo is the heart. Aquarius is the ankles and the eyes. And so then Pisces rules the feet because we've gone down the body. And it's very much, like I've already said, it's mute it's water, it's compassion, it, these are the artists, musicians, charity workers, or anything, anything where they can have some kind of creative vision um, and ability to connect with people, yoga teachers, spiritual people, mystics, very, very, very Pisces, where Virgo is the doctor, Pisces is the healer, they're six months apart, you know, that they are different sides of the same coin, and so Pisces is very, yeah, it, creative sensitive and i've never met a site and i've met a lot of psychics legit psychics mediums and they've all either pisces or got mercury or rising or venus pisces because it's this kind of blurry boundary between this world and the next they're so very connected to spirit to the beyond to to inspiration to um yeah you know they they write music chris what's his name coldplay the Coldplay guy, he's a Pisces, and he always says like he doesn't write the music; it just comes to him. It's it, it's it flows through him. It, it's very Pisces, and he's so gentle, isn't he? He's so Pisces. But then you get a lot of kind of skeptical Pisces as well. Like, um, oh, what's his name? The 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 physics the physics guy who's always getting mad with astrologers. I don't know Einstein. Also, you know, you get this kind of Virgo. Pisces flipping between the two anyway moon in Pisces very gentle very sensitive lovely people very compassionate they need to have some boundary Pisces is ruled by Neptune and Neptune is got to the seas and you know seas or seas can flood seas don't have 
there's no real hard boundary and so people with pisces planets that's why they're so receptive to energy and ideas but also that means they can fall victim to people taking advantage of them and their their gentle lovely nature and that you know they, they believe they believe everything but they're very compassionate very caring very um sensitive people artistic creative um yeah i think in short there's much more to it and venus in pisces venus was born in the water venus loves to be in pisces she's exalted in pisces and you can see that because venus is what we love and what we attract and in, in pisces it's all very fairy tale and romantic and ideal and there's an element of fantasy to pisces so there's an ele there's just a quality to people who have venus and pisces and if you have that or you know somebody with it you'll know what i mean mars in pisces again mars is fire and then if he's in a water sign it, he, he's he's not going to assert himself so these are definitely the ghosters of the zodiac in my opinion but they are you know they're great on the dance floor and they're great musicians and they are charmers they are very very charming people i really really like mars and pisces people particularly because again i they're not confrontational i really personally enjoy that <laughs> but it, it can mean that they do avoid confrontation and it, it's it's a real battle if you need to have a confrontation with somebody who's got mars and pisces or if you are yourself mars and pisces then you'll know that it's sometimes hard to like get your point across mercury and pisces very creative again it's kind of quite right brained if you know what right brain and left brain are like visual um you know they hear the tune they don't hear the words and might be not so great at reading maps but great at spinning a story and maybe photography again you know mercury in a water sign rising pisces go out into the world being a little bit dreamy like it's you know when i said my rising aries is like hi i'm here rising pisces is definitely a lot slower in the approach to life <laughs> yeah. a lot more gentle and um yeah they really feel their way into things and they they definitely when they go into situation they they're reading it it's a it's a gentle approach okay right i'm coming up for an hour yeah, whoops <laughs> It was supposed to be 45 minutes, but the other one was shorter. So hopefully that's okay. And hopefully you, you got enough info or at least a nugget of your, your five things, your sun, your moon, your rising sign, your, well, your six, your Mercury, your Venus and your Mars. And you can, you can kind of weave that story together. It's been really fun making this video and keeping my family quiet while I've done it, which was a big task. I tell you, and there's only mum and dad and the dog, but still, they did it. And so you've got your worksheet. If you have questions, you know, send them to whatever address um, they're giving you here. Otherwise, my website is francescaoddy.com and Instagram is Francesca Audi Astrology. And I can, you know, if, if there are questions, I can do a little Instagram story or whatever to just if I've missed anything or um, you know, if you need anything. But thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this exciting and you can put it to use and you can look at your own chart. This obviously is a top light, top introductory event, very rapid, very full, hopefully very rich in information and has illuminated you to what real astrology is. But also there is a lot more and there's more planets. So don't feel... If I've said something today that you still don't resonate with, it's because there is more. There is more to astrology and the way it works. But you should, I hope, connect with some part of what we've said today. Anyway, enjoy your virtual festival. And um, thanks again for watching. If you like that video, there are loads more talks, classes, and exclusive videos from the Happy Place Virtual Festival. So don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Do follow us on Instagram for constant updates and enjoy.